Yo, what's going on guys, Sparrow64 here, and today, I'm showing you something that I thought I did before, but apparently not. It's how to make a good YouTube thumbnail. Now, honestly, there's a lot of websites for this. I'm using this wannabe, um, Photoshop, third-party Photoshop, Pixlr, Editor. Now, this is basically Photoshop, it's online photo editor. Um, I think... Um, I, I might show you a few different ways. This is probably just the only one I'm going to do. But basically, I'll just give you a little tutorial on how to use this. I'm not completely familiar with it. I use Photoshop myself. I'm not used to this kind of thing. But if you want your free Photoshop, come here. And we'll basically make your thumbnails or channel alerts, which was what I was going to do today but I've decided a thumbnail would be a better idea. So basically, what you want to do is create a new image. So the file size for a thumbnail, you can have a bunch of file sizes, but the b best definition file size is going to be 1920 for the width by 1080p. Shoot, 1080. So that's like usually the quality you would want for a video. Like, usually people have 720p, but this would be, like, a 1080p thumbnail. Um, I'll pull up a thumbnail, like, this one right here. It When it's big and bloated, it doesn't look, like, super good quality, but in the on my channel, it's gonna, on your channel's thumbnail, it's gonna look good. You wanna check transparent, because transparent's always nice. You know, you don't have to do that, but I like turning on transparent because it, for some reason, helps me. And then you want to name it. You don't have to name this. Um, I never really found a point in naming things, but I'm going to do that anyway for the sake of this video. So just name it thumbnail, hit OK, and it opens you up with this. It says thumbnail up here. It looks slightly confusing, but trust me, it's not that confusing. So first of all, what I like to do is go over to here where it says tools, go down and find this magnifying glass, right click on the screen and click zoom out. You don't have to do this, it actually makes it slightly harder to see, but I like it with that border around it so that you can easily find your borders on your video thumbnail and not accidentally leave black squares around it. Okay guys, do you want to... What you're going to want to do next is find a good background image. So say, well, I'll just make the thumbnail for this thumbnail. So all it's going to say is really how to make a YouTube thumbnail. So what I usually do is put sunburst backgrounds. You don't actually have to do that. But there's a bunch of different backgrounds. So let's just look up background. I'll be back with you when I find a good one. Okay, guys, once you found the image that you want, you're going to want to, instead of just saving this to your desktop, click View Image. Viewing the image will show you its actual size. If it was super small, then obviously it would be terrible quality in your thumbnail. This, I believe, is 852 by 480 pixels. That is actually a little small, but looking at it, it should be perfectly fine. So what you want to do is, um, I'm not really sure what this is called. You're just going to want to minimize the screen, basically, and make it smaller. So you can just drag this image to your desktop. After you've done that, you want to go to your online photo ex editor, Pixlr and go back full screen. You're going to want to click File, Open Image, and then find your file. Mine is named 1, coincidentally. As you can see, it opens it up in a great size, but this is actually not on the thumbnail layer. So what you're going to want to do for that is Control A, Control C, close out of here, hit No, open this up, Control V, and there you go, it's pasted in. Now what you want to do is select this image. Once you have it selected, to edit, free transform, and then those boxes come around it. All those boxes are, are resizing the image. So basically, you just drag it until it fits the size that you need it to be. As you can see here, it's a pretty good file size, so it's not exactly blurry. And usually when you click enter, or whatever you use to say, yeah, I'm done, it actually gets better quality because it adjusts to it. And there we are, now we have our background. Okay guys, so after you have your background, you're going to want to have some sort of text. Now, obviously, this is how to make a YouTube thumbnail. So, you can always just go over here, go to the text, and type something up. You know, how to use a thumbnail, blah blah blah. But, I do not like to do that. It's no big secret, all of us do this. You just have to go over and go to flamingtext.com. 
Okay, guys, this is flamingtext.com. No big secret, this is how I get a lot of my logos, a lot of my texts. So, really, all you're doing is putting in what you want your logo to be. So, in this case, how to make a YouTube thumbnail. You type that in here click get started and it changes all their text previews to how to make a YouTube thumbnail but as you can see it has dot 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 after the T in YouTube that means it's obviously gonna be a little bit long and it's not gonna fit very well on here so what you're what I'm going to do anyway you don't have to do this it's completely optional but I'm gonna click flaming text logo I'm gonna put how to make and just click get started after capitalizing this M because I don't know why. So you just want how to make and then after you've typed that it just says how to make. It has many layer layer layers. It has many um pages of different types of text. This is the one I used on my try not to laugh video and it's actually a very nice text. People spent time drawing all of these and they gave it well technically <laughs> here um you kind of have to buy some of these logos but i can show you a way to get any of them you want for free even if they have um a watermark okay guys so i've just decided to go back to the first page and use this text right here as you can see it looks pretty nice and i like that red already so i'm not going to change that i want to click edit logo and it'll bring you to this page so this is what your logo says now you can always enter it and then go down so you can say how to make a enter YouTube thumbnail how to make a YouTube thumbnail there it is it's all done and that's what I want so after you have that what I like to do is drag this font size slider all the way you want it to be right along the edge of the premium because the premium you have to buy so as you can see it makes the text bigger making it b better quality so you're sure that it'll look good in your thumbnail next thing you want to do is go to logo this is where you can change the colors the patterns the gradients the outline size pretty much anything you want I'm not gonna do that because I kinda like this red font tint thing so the next layer is shadow you can have shadow right now the shadow is glow I kinda like the shadow so I'm gonna keep that but I'm not sure if you guys like it so if you don't like it there is type none drop reflection glow which is what's mine's on normal and self so basically none does none drop is a drop shadow let it load for a second and you'll see it's a drop shadow reflection is a reflective shadow that's underneath this so really it's just a reflection along the bottom glow is what you saw with mine earlier it's glowing out from the middle not in any specific direction normal would be like a normal shadow as you can see everything is being reflected down in gray self I actually have no idea oh so, okay so self is basically taking the picture you have recolorizing the shadow and making it look like the exact same thing so if you wanted a 3d text that's what you would want I'm gonna keep it on glow because that is how I liked it in the original picture and that's how I'm going to keep it okay guys I'm actually going to back to the logo cuz the color is a little iffy like if you look at this well it looks fine but I don't really like it too much I'm gonna get a darker red and hit OK as you can see now the red is darker I'm not really sure why oh if you hit gradient apparently it becomes it becomes rainbow if you hit pattern it gets it a nice texture I wanna see what kind of textures they have because that can be very awesome like look at this metal texture and tell me this doesn't look cool okay that doesn't look cool anyway guys I'm gonna just go back to single color cuz I liked the red let's make it a little bit darker red hit OK and leave it as that so n the last thing you're gonna want to do is go to the background so background basically this is where you're gonna wanna keep it sunburst you can automatically have your sunburst background that's what I have in this over here just it looks basically like that 
Gradient, on the other hand, is a gradient between the different colors, as you can see. Pattern is a pattern, or the texture, as I was going over earlier. Color is just a single color, which is usually def defaulted as white. And transparent is what you're going to want to click. That means it has no background so that you can easily drag it in and not have to delete anything from behind it. The last thing you want to do is go into image. You want to make sure the file format is PNG or GIF. PNG means it's going to be a still picture but the tr with a transparent background. GIF means it can have a transparent background but it's usually used for moving pictures. JPEG means it has to have a solid background so this would be defaulted back to white. And XCF I actually have no idea. But I would normally keep it on PNG unless you have a GIF background or a GIF. So the next thing you want to do is click next, obviously. This brings you to the done section, and your picture will come up here. Now what you can do is buy the logo, but you don't need to. That's basically, um, how do I put this? You're basically just donating, because people spend a lot of time doing this, and, well, they did it all for free. Okay guys, so, it says free to use however you like, or buy the logo to remove watermark. The thing is, I do not see a watermark anywhere, so you just minimize the screen like before, drag the image to the desktop, go to your photo editor, open it back up, file, open image, and open your text. Okay guys, after your text is opened, you're going to do the same trick, control A, control C, basically what you're doing here, or command if you have Apple obviously, but what you're doing here is control A slash command A would be selecting everything and then Control A or Command, I mean Control C or Command C would really just co copy it. So after you've copied it, you can X out and click No for saving. Once you click Control V, that's our paste button. So now you have your text in here, and as you can see, it's kind of hard to read, but that's usually how it is. What you do is when you zoom in, it actually looks a lot better. Obviously, in this case, it doesn't look that good. So what we're going to do is give it an outline. Okay, guys, to give your text an outline, or anything an outline in general, you want to click this little thing down here. It's like a box with a star thing. It's called Layer Styles. So once you click it, it has all these things. You can add Drop Shadow, Inner Shadow, a Bevel, Outer Glow, or Inner Glow. I want to put the Outer Glow, which is basically giving it an outline. Okay, guys, before I do that, I'm actually going to edit Free Transform. This text is actually kind of small, so I'm going to make it a bit bigger, just like this. There we go, that looks better, and actually, looking at it, I don't think I even need a, a background thingy. Okay, so guys, so what I'm going to do next is, oops, what I'm going to do next is select the background layer. As you can see, I'm on this layer here, because when you click the off button thing, check, that hides the layer. So what you want to do is go to adjustments, hue slash saturation, and then you can change the color of any image. So basically, I got this as purple grunge starburst background, but I can actually make it blue. I can make it gray. I can make it a really light blue. I'm going to make it kind of gray. Lightness, you can actually make it brighter or darker. I'm going to leave that at zero, how it was. Shoot. I did not mean to do that. Let's go back to our hue slash saturation. And actually, every time you exit it, it saves that. So, like, you can keep going back in and editing the hue and editing the hue until it gets to the color you want. I decided I liked that color. So I'm going to keep it on this color and keep going. Okay, guys, so what you're going to want to do next is, like I was trying to do earlier, add an outline to your text. What you want to do is click this. Actually, what is this? Oh, that's the layer mask. Okay, guys. Anyway, you're going to go to Layer Styles, which is this button right here. Then you can do Drop Shadow, and it makes it more apparent. If you do Outer Glow as well, it makes it look very nice. Or if you turn on everything at once, it looks super stupid. But hey, you can do whatever you want. Anyway, so when you go to your Outer Glow, you can up the hardness, up the size, or lower or up the opacity. So if you wanted it full opacity, I actually kind of like this, but you can change the color as well. I'm going to have it black, hit OK, and as you can see, that's what it looks like. I'm going to actually lower the opacity a bit. The hardness is actually fine. The size is actually what I wanted to change. 
There we go. That looks nice to me. And it should look good. Shoot, I hit X. Okay, guys, I accidentally hit X, so that's, I'm going to actually go back to what I did. And make the size big. Hardness full. Pacey low. Drop shadow turned off. And there we go. You actually want to hit OK, not X. So after you hit OK, everything will be saved. I'm going to go back and free transform this picture because it's actually kind of distorted, which I didn't notice before. But that looks fine, and this is how to make a thumbnail. Once you hit enter, it actually looks better in the free transform for some reason, but I think that would be the final quality anyway. So once you hit enter, you have your picture. So, like I said before, you can zoom in and actually make it a lot easier to see. I zoomed in a lot for some reason. So I'm going to zoom out. Fine, you can just use this to zoom out, guys. So if you want to zoom out easily, just use this draggy thingy on the side. Okay, guys, anyway, I'm going to leave it like this and have that stuff around it. So now you have this little background thingy. That's all you really need to do. But you want to make your backgrounds kind of pop. So what I like to do is this thumbnail will actually be kind of boring, unfortunately. But there's a lot of different things that you can do. Now, like I said, I might have a few different, um, how do I put this, ways of doing this. If you would like to see a different and possibly better way of m making this, then please let me know. If you've never used flaming text before, I'm surprised you haven't. Flaming text is actually very helpful. It has all these wonderful fonts and really all you need to make. There's also another website if you want. It's called cooltext.com. Now this has a lot of the same fonts as flaming text, but this has a little bit better things. As you can see, dark here is in my outro. Grinch, I believe, Drew used in one of his Christmas videos. Cool text graphics generator. Like, you have all these amazing little pieces of font or text. You can really use those for logos if you want to. Okay, guys, so we're back over here. And all you want to really do now is file and save. So if you want to edit anything else, go right ahead. I'll give you a little overview of these. This button. So this is basically a magic wand, thus the name wand tool. So what you can do is select all of one color. So you want to the text layer and you want to select all the red. You can do that. Or it's really helpful in a situation that I'm about to show you now. Okay guys, so I'm going to show you one thing that Magic Wand Tool is very helpful with and that a lot of you should find very interesting. So you're going to want to open an image and say you have this picture here. As you can see, it has a white background. And usually that's not what you want. You would want something with a transparent background or no background at all. So what you want to do to get rid of that white background is go to the wand tool. You can click the white, hold down shift and click any other place and it'll save your spot. You want to make sure you have all the white selected. Sometimes it's a little iffy, but you know, it's free Photoshop. So you can you take what you can get. So after that, you want to want to add a layer behind this background. Double clicking the lock will unlock it. So once you put a layer under there and click backspace. Okay guys, I'm back. Um, That was actually getting a little bit iffy. But as you can see, you just click the white, click delete, and then it clears all the white, making it a transparent background. So you can either click each white separately, because if you click a white and then another white, it switches your form. But if you hit, click a white and then hold shift, you can click another white, and they'll both be selected at the same time. So basically, if you wanted a background, or if you wanted an image that had a white background, but you wanted to get rid of that white background, then this would be the way to do it. Anyway guys, that's pretty much how to make your YouTube thumbnail. All you want to do to save it now is click File, Save, and then save your image. So you can either save it to your Pixel or library and put it in an email, or save it to my computer. Saving it to my computer is what you want to do. Quality, you can make it as best as you want. I'm going to leave it at 100 and click OK. Actually, before you do that, you just want to make sure JPEG is the thing because PNG, if you want it for your YouTube thumbnail, for some reason it won't accept it. BMP, P, 
TIFF and PXD are just weird files, and you just trust me, you want to save it as JPEG unless it has a transparent background. So hit OK, name it, save it to your desktop or wherever, click save, and pretty much you're done. Now that you're done, all you have to do is, basically, all you have to do is go over these simple steps and make a bunch of different things. If you want to see how to make a YouTube channel art, I was planning on doing that too. I already have a video on this, but I need to remake it because it was actually terrible. I have a bunch of different ways of making things for your YouTube. YouTube channel arts, thumbnails as you saw here, or even profile pictures. If you want to see how to make any of those, leave a comment down below. If you have not considered it already, subscribing would be a big help. Usually I'm not as confident as I was in this video, and I actually had a lot of messes up. Mess ups. <laughs> Sorry for that. I was actually planning on making two videos today. If you want to see more than two, then let me know. Right now I'm on Christmas break from school, so I actually have a lot more stability. If you want to see one or even two videos a day, let me know. Usually though, that won't happen. I'm always at my grandma's or something. Anyway guys, that's been how to make a YouTube thumbnail. Like said previously, like, comment, subscribe. See you guys in the next one.